Today's Morphin Network video is sponsored by Ranger Stop and Pop, which is now August the 27th to the 29th, 2021 in Atlanta, Georgia. And Ranger Stock Adventure, which is now November 11th to the 14th, 2021 in Orlando, Florida. Go to rangerstop.com for more info. too serious you just want to wait a minute i think the press are on their way and uh, they're expecting the yellow ranger <laughs> sure you're getting captured we'll make a great headline <laughs> Woo. How are you? How are you? I'm good. It's Sunday over here. It's Sunday afternoon, winter, but it's uh, not too cold today, thankfully. Mm. So yeah, I'm good. Yeah. Here, it's not cold enough. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, hello, guys. Welcome again to this interview. Um, we have Joel Tobek, veteran Power Rangers voice actors. He voiced a lot of Power Rangers, Power Rangers in Power Ranger history. Starting... Two of my favorite Ninja Storm episodes. Yes. Excellent. So he voiced um, Mike. Fudzilla? Uh, that is Fudzilla from the episode Se uh, Sensei Switcheroo. That was a okay. long time ago. Yes. Yep. And then, remember this, Mike? Remember him, Mike? Uh, yes. Uh, it's from the episode Tongue in Cheek, and he played the Slob Goblin. That's the right. one that turns uh, his victims into stamps. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and right. uh, remember him? Yes, that's Jupitron from uh, the episode of. Uh, Dino Thunder, mm -hmm. where I, if I remember correctly, no, no, wait, no, 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 that was the episode after that. But this is the, this is definitely a big episode for Cassidy. Mm -hmm. So you know, power to the uh, supporting cast. Yeah, totally. and, we, uh, and of course, uh, yes, uh, uh, Duplicator from uh, that episode of Samurai, uh, Spike. Uh, it's a Runaway Spike. Yeah, that's the one. <laughs> where he gets oh. separated from bulk. Damn, yeah, but he has a good memory. I don't know. He has a good memory. Yeah, big fan. Uh, yeah. A real fan. Yeah, right. I'm, I'm such a big fan of Ninja Storm yeah. that, I, as you might have noticed, I've quoted so many lines from the two episodes you were in. <laughs> well, yeah. we have three more, Mike. So who was this? I, don't, I know these characters. I don't see who. Who was this guy? Okay, um, it's, it's the UFO guy. I can't remember his name. But the episode of Mega, it's the second episode of Mega Force called He Blasted Me with Science. That's correct. And his name was UFO. UFO. <laughs> yes. And then okay. um, <sighs> we have this, this guy was actually my favorite monster in the Super Mega Force. <laughs> so, Mike, uh, you Okay. Okay. Uh, this, okay. This one is tougher. He's for, definitely from Super Mega Force. Um, let's see. He's a, he a commander. Okay. Yes. Um, yeah, he uh, yeah he was definitely a commander uh, from the episode Silver Lining Part One. Uh, he uh, Gorgax. Oh, damn. very good. Very good. <laughs> one more. One more. Who's that? Ooh, one more. Who, who, come on. Digitron come on. from uh, Cruising nice. for a Bruising. <laughs> Digitron. I remember that. Yeah. 
<laughs> All right. So yeah, guys, those are the monsters that this amazing individual voiced from Power Rangers. Mm-hmm. Now getting started. So Joel, how you get started with acting? Well, um, if, uh, those of you who remember Hercules and Xena and all those shows, Hercules, the legendary journey, his mother uh, was called Alchemy. Mm. Now the actress who played that was my mother in real life, oh. L- Liddy Holloway. Cool. So uh, I grew up in an acting family because of her. She was a very well regarded actor and writer here in New Zealand, and she was in theatre when I was a baby. Because in those days there wasn't a lot of television down here. It's mostly the actors were mostly doing theatre. So I was born and raised in the theatre, and in fact I was on stage with her when I was five years old. So. I've been sort of doing it ever since then, really. So I'm just just turned fifty. Mm-hmm. So forty five years later, I'm still doing it. And along the way, I've decided to become a voice actor and a voice. Uh, I do a lot of commercials, and so yeah, mm-hmm. that's how I started. And by the way, fifty still young, by the way, Joel. So you're not old. Thanks, okay. man. Yeah, keep, according to my dad, fifty still young. So. I haven't had to dye my hair yet, although you never know. <laughs> In that process. Uh, what what made you decide to make that switch to voice acting, and how how did that process come along? Well, in New Zealand, um, actors, especially when I started, we had to be uh, able to do everything. So we had to do theatre, uh, dance, musicals, TV, film, voiceovers. So being a voice actor was just part of my. Uh, Repertoire. So, and I started in radio at a very young age, working in college radio down here. So, I just started doing voiceovers then, and that wasn't because of my mother. It was just because I always wanted to work in radio. So, I did my first voice commercial when I was sixteen, and uh, luckily, Touchwood, I've been doing voice work ever since then. And it's just part of being an actor down here. Um, and along the way, you get opportunities like Power Rangers and other animation stuff that I've done, and. Uh, yeah, so I'm, it's part just part of my repertoire, which I'm very proud of. So yeah. Hmm, interesting. I mean, yeah. I mean, of course, what you guys don't know, this guy's line of work is really, really impressive. Hmm. Now before we go into more into that. Now go back. Still going back to Power Rangers. How did you start working for Power Rangers? Well, uh, again, I guess my voice agent. I have down here. I have two agents: an acting agent and a voice agent. And so my voice agent called me up one day and said, "Power Rangers is being made. Would you like?" to audition for one of the characters and of course I said yes because it's a new challenge and uh, we generally go in and we audition for a couple of characters at a time and it just so happens some days you don't get the, the gig or they go somewhere else other days they get a call back in a week or so you've got the job so and then from there um, you know I, I get called up again I got to go in on Friday actually and read for a couple of more more characters and so that's just every year or so I might get the call would you like to audition for again and so yeah there we go that's how it started so my question is and and this might be a little harder for you in terms of quantity yeah. but um how did you uh come to the specific voice that you ended up using for each of the monsters that you've played well I generally I go in there uh, I don't really plan anything before I go in. I get a brief and a script before an audition, but I'll go in there and I'll just see a picture and I will just try something out. And we, you know, in an audition situation, you get a good half an hour, 45 minutes sometimes to read for these characters and you just try voices. Uh, and I'm the kind of actor I always have been where I just let it come to me, whatever I think is it, it comes in from the universe, whatever you want to call it. Mm-hmm. And if, if the director's happy with that, we'll go with that. If he wants something else, he'll say, no, try something else. And believe me, it's happened many times where they said, no, that's not what we want. Try something else. And you just got to get over your ego and just have another go and try something else and make it work. And that's just how I work. I've always worked that way. Again, it might be a little too hard, but I don't know. Maybe you can still remember, like, um, of all the monsters you've voiced in Power Rangers, you did voice a lot. Yeah. Which one was your favorite? Uh... I don't know. Uh, you know what? I get asked that about my career as well. Which is your favorite acting job you've ever done? And I, and I always, the answer is always, well, it, it's always a new phase in my career. So I guess my first one would have been my favorite because, <laughs> because it was a new experience. It was a new, uh, I'd never done it before. I'd obviously done a good job because they brought me in to do it. And the challenge for me as an actor is to make it, uh, A, believable, 
and interesting and uh, there's a certain amount of stamina you need as a voice actor on a show like Power Rangers because not only do you do the dialogue but then you have to do all the action stuff for the fights and the, the grunts and the ah, uh, uh, which can be very taxing on the voice. Um, so I guess you know my, the last time I was in the studio was was fun. Uh, my friend Jim McClarty was uh, or, uh, running the sessions back then. So I guess my first one would be my favorite just because it's a new adventure. And you know, you always think of your projects as your babies, your characters that you make as your babies, your children. So yeah. Mm, that's interesting. Mm. Wonderful. Okay, so as I've said behind uh, behind the scenes that one of my favorite superheroes is Ghost Rider. And right. it just so happens that you had a role in the Nicolas Cage film uh, of the same name. So yep. could you please tell us a little bit about your experience playing your character in that movie? Yes. Now that was shot in Melbourne, Australia down at Docklands, which is a, now it's all high rises and stuff, but what, back then it was just an empty sort of lot. And so in 2003, I think I auditioned from memory. Again, my agent in Australia put me up for it. I got the part and I spent a week and a half on Ghost Rider. We probably worked two of the days that I was down there on set. I spent the rest of the time in my trailer. <laughs> I had a back injury, I remember. So I was getting a lot of massage, massages by the masseuse sounds very glamorous but it's not and so I, we spent a couple of days on set with nicholas for that big fight scene and of course he's nicholas cage and the, <laughs> i was always a bit apprehensive when i first met him but he was a really nice guy um he really loved to because the scene was a big fight scene so he always kept trying to get us to ramp it up and he always said you want to ramp it up a bit you guys you know ramp it up and so because he wanted a bit more physicality a bit more action and he was not afraid to really uh, get involved and you know see how far he could go in the scene with all that stuff and what one thing I came away from working with him that I in a huge respect to him was the fact that um, you know when we shoot on film we shoot one way that actor does their dialogue then the cameras will turn around and shoot the other way for their other actors responses and their dialogue now I've worked on American shows before where the leads when they're not on camera, they're not always on set. Mm. So it's usually someone else reading the offlines. But huge, huge respect to Nicolas Cage because when it was his turn to do offlines and he wasn't on camera for us, he was, he was, they said to him, look, Nick, you don't have to be here. You can go back to your trailer. He said, no, no, I'm going to stick around. And, and so kudos to him because he didn't have to stick around for us to do these little offlines. And uh, he did. And so I, I always remember that. I'll never forget it. That's mm. wonderful. That, that's I, that's so amazing. Yeah. I, I love it when actors have that kind of humility where they stay yeah. on set even when they don't have to. And and also to all you Tokusatsu fans, just, just to be on record, uh, Nicolas Cage is a Kamen Rider fan. So yeah. Ghost Rider did buy Kamen Rider Ghost <laughs> stuff. So <laughs> Yes, and I, he, yeah. And, you know, um, I, I will say there's not all actors are really up themselves and won't stick around for offline. It's very rare that you get that. But, um, you know, someone like Nicolas Cage, we were just mere small players in this film. So it was really good of him to do that. Mm, yes. Wonderful. Now, you were also part of another series I actually do really, really like. <laughs> okay, guys, yes, you guys know I'm a Tolkien fan. Now, yeah. can you tell us your experience filming Lord of the Rings? Yeah. Again, that was 2003. Uh, down here in New Zealand and Wellington, I was called in for the, I was called in for the pickups. So they spent about six months doing pickups, which is, you know, once the whole film's made, they might assemble the picture, have a viewing, and then the direct directors and producers might decide, well, we need to, actually, we need to, a bit more stuff to get. We need to shoot more stuff from, from that scene. So we'll all come in later on and reshoot stuff. So that's when I was brought in to play um, the orc lieutenant. And uh, so I was there for on and off for about two or three months. Uh, again, a lot of time sitting around waiting, but I would have makeup calls. Now, if you guys remember, oh, I, was wear no. I was wearing that. <laughs> so that to put, to put that on my face took five hours. So I would get go to bed or get up at midnight or 2 a.m. No, get up at midnight, be in the chair by two o'clock in the morning 
to be really on set for 7 a.m. So Gino as video, who's uh, who was the lead prosthetics guy on Lord of the Rings, did a fantastic job every morning. We became very good friends because <laughs> I spent a lot of time with Gino. And so it would be a five hour makeup job, plus the costumes and the chain mail and stuff. So, you know, they were long days and um, I, at the end of every day, I couldn't wait to just get this thing off my face because a lot of prosthetics. That is awesome because, you know, uh, not not everyone who watches movies realizes how much work goes into uh, prosthetic makeup, both yeah. in terms of applying it and having yeah. it be applied onto you. Yeah, so. and Peter didn't like the actor's prosthetics to have uh, uh, holes in the noses, so we could only breathe through our mouth. Ooh. And, of course, I had... Because if, if we breathe through our nose, you could see the prosthetics moving. So he didn't like that. So I would, not only did I have contact lenses, which really hurt, but I had a mouthful of teeth as well, which I have somewhere, but I don't know where they are. So I'd have to breathe all day through these teeth. <laughs> so it wasn't pleasant, but when the camera's rolling and when you're part of such a great experience as Lord of the Rings is, you know, what are you going to do? Yeah. I certainly would not have the attention spent to sit, uh, sit on a chair for five hours. <laughs> Well, you, you know, you become very close with these people. <laughs> that is true. That is true. Yeah, that is true. Um, uh, now, there, there's another series that you were also... Actually, two series that you were in. Uh, yeah. But um, I'm going to uh, ask about one of them specifically. Uh, what was it like being in Ash vs. Evil Dead? Well, again, um, you know, the makers of Herc and Xena, who have been working down here for 25 years plus, they, uh, so I've always been working with them on and off. Uh, Rob Tappet came to my agent and said, we've got this new character. Would Joel be interested in playing it? Um, now, as an aside, it was my birthday the other day. I turned 50 and my friend, who I play table tennis with, uh, downstairs, I have table tennis. So we have these very rigorous battles of table tennis, my wife versus him and his wife. And, he's, and I said, no presents. You're coming to my birthday, but no presents, please. And he said, he showed up at my house. He said, happy birthday. I know that we weren't supposed to make you any presents or get you any presents, but I have made you this. Wow. So he made, <laughs> that's my character from Ash vs. Evil Dead. That's a table tennis table paddle. <laughs> so, oh, that, that's great. <laughs> so i got to frame that somehow. Yeah, maybe someone should make you a new paddle where, where it's um, where it's Footzilla on one side yeah, yeah, yeah. and and uh, the the other monster on the other side. That's right. So once again, for Ash vs. Evil Dead, I found myself working with the great Lucy Lawless, who her and I started together way back in 1992. We did a short film together called Peach. And she wasn't even Xena back then. Mm -hmm. And of course, she took off. And we've worked together a lot over the years. And I, I mean, I love working for those people because it's just a lot of fun. You know, and a lot of blood, a lot of guts, and uh, yeah, good times. Yeah, you were in so many other shows that I just wish I could ask you about. Uh, like, for example, uh, Xena, Young Hercules, Shortland Street, who this guy is a huge fan of. Uh huh. Okay, fine. How are you, Mike? Well, we explain it. So, one by one, each series. So, first, let's start with Xena. So, yeah. How's your story working, Xena? It was great. Uh, I think I'd before I did Xena, I'd been on Hercules, the legendary journeys for a while as Strife, and Strife died in Hercules. Uh, I forget the character's name, but she he was killed, and so then I went on to Xena. But because I died in Hercules, Rob Tappet, the executive producer, was like, "Oh God, we need this character back. What are we going to do?" So they decided to write Deimos, which is the Strife's cousin, and I had the bleached blonde wig and a maroon muscle suit and tassels. But I was basically Strife. I basically played Strife again. But um, so I did that. I did that for a little while. And of course, you know, when you get a chance to work on those shows, it's great fun. It's always a lot of fun. And you know, everybody on set, they're all your friends. You know, Kevin Smith, who played Ares, was my best friend, before, you know, and then unfortunately he passed away. But we were very close. Um, my, I, know that I worked with my mum on that show briefly as well and you just get to the community down here the acting community is very small but very tight knit and very close so you know you can look and be in a room full of these actors and you go oh, God, we've worked together on this we did that and we did that and it's just amazing so yeah you know working on those shows is, is a lot of fun and of course there was Cleopatra 25 25 and Young Hercules and, hmm. yeah. yeah and now next is I think Vazina oh, 
Is Xena, right? Oh, no, Hercules. Hercules. So, mm. Young Hercules. Yeah. Young Hercules, yes. Well, of course, because Hercules' legendary journeys and Xena had exploded, Rob wanted to, to make another show, uh, and he came up with Young Hercules. You know, I, Hercules as a younger man, as a teenage boy, Ryan, Ryan Gosling. <laughs> Ryan Gosling. Myself, Strife, Megan uh, Desmond played, uh, what was her name? She was my sidekick. Da uh, can't remember. So, uh, and uh, of course, Kevin Smith as Aries. My, one of my best friends, Dino Gorman, played young Neolus. So it was a lot of, and that was a year and a half, two years of just absolute fun every day at work. Um, you know, and of course, Ryan Gosling went on to explode around the world and he's still the same lovely man as we knew back then. Nice, nice. Actually, you know, the fact that you came back to play Strife in a prequel to Hercules, that kind of puts you on a similar level to Ian McDermott because, you know, you yeah. know, he was like a 37-year-old playing a 70-year-old in right. uh, Return of the Jedi. And then yeah. and then he was a 50-year-old playing a 50-year-old in uh, Phantom Menace. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, um, it's, it's, those shows were just so much fun to work on, and it was great for me as an actor to work on my comedy timing uh, because they they gave me free reign. They, you know, these characters are crazy, Joel. You got to be crazy. So it was a lot of fun. yeah, it's a show that uh, what's funny is I can actually do a Shortland Street reunion with your guys right now. <laughs> yeah, but I am a Shorties fan. I actually grew up watching Shorties in the U.S. Yeah, is that right? Is that right? Nice. And then thanks to that show, I was able to influence my. Career in public health. Well, career in public, but my passion public yeah. health. Because I graduated public health, science and degree in public health, thanks yeah. to shorties. So thank you. Nice. <laughs> so, well, so experience on shorties. What was it like? Well, um, you know, my mother was. Did you remember uh, Alex McKenna from way back? Yeah. That's I, my mother. I, I that was, that's my mother. Yeah. So, oh, God. So we, when I first was on Shortland Street in 1995. She was on the show as well with uh, and she was martin henderson's mm -hmm. uh mother who stuart i can't remember his name on the show but uh see martin and henderson and i started together as well he was 12 and i was 16 when we did our first tv show together and she played his mother i was at, i was on an, originally in a wheelchair my character was craig devilto in a wheelchair so i spent about two or three months back in 95 as this character and then i went back in 2015 playing jimmy come on jimmy the rock and roller mm -hmm. uh, who hooked up with um bella they had a baby together so i was yeah. on there for for a year and it was, it was just a lot of fun yeah i mean it's a it's a it's a it's, a, it's been around so long down here you yeah know. isn't there like ten thousand episodes or something like that yeah, like 10, oh, it's, it's three yeah maybe four thousand yeah it's 20 <laughs> five years i think that just on the because i know yeah. it's one of those a uh, one episode a day five days a week type of shows yep. and it's been around for about 30 years so i'm thinking it's yep. in the ballpark of like ten thousand episodes. yeah 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 and um th they all know what they're doing they're amazing you you walk on to that show and you have to go well i've got to keep up with these people because they're really expert at this genre of t television making and they're all great people a lot of them are friends of mine again we're all very close tight knit little community down here so and my brother who's a first ad has worked on that as a first ad He's, my sister-in-law is a production manager she's worked on that as that show as well so you know we it's all in the family and uh you know i of course michael galvin who plays chris warner he's yeah. been he's been there 25 years i knew him back in 1990 when he was just come out of drama school you know? so weird He's actually one of my favorite characters too on a show. So right, <laughs> yeah, uh, him, and I don't know if you know Andrew Lang, like his character with Anna yeah. Hutchinson and his sister. Yeah, when they were play, played siblings. Yeah, I remember that that part. Yeah, so well. I love that. That's one of my favorite arcs on the show. Well, uh, Andrew used to come and stay at my house. Oh, yeah. yeah, we actually interviewed Andrew like five, six months ago. He was cool. I yeah. love, I love Andrew. Um, yeah. and also one of my power, favorite Power Ranger villains. <laughs> uh huh. Yeah, I, I think we've interviewed more actors that were in Shortland Street than actors that weren't in Shortland Street. <laughs> is, most actors have done Shortland Street down here. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, and also recently you were on the star show The Luminaries as yep. uh, as Ben Lowenthal. Yes. Yes. Uh, so want to yeah. tell us a little bit about that as well before yeah. we move well, on? Yeah. Um, I was kind of the last 
pretty much the last of the 12 luminaries to be cast and um yeah we went in we spent two or three months making it and again all those 12 luminaries were all really good friends off camera so with the 12 of us uh had our own trailers together and we just laughed all the time we'd spent all day laughing and of course martin on chokash was on shorten street yeah back back in when it started he was lionel no he wasn't he was someone else but anyway back in the when shorten street first started uh martin chokash was on that now he's become this great actor overseas mm -hmm. And so it was really great to catch up with him. I hadn't worked with him for a long time. Um, great production, great people. Again, you know, a great director, Claire McCarthy, an Australian director, and her husband, uh, Benson, uh, the DOP. You know, it's just great to work. And it's also the, it's amazing and fun to work with your friends as well, which is luckily what I get to do most of the time. Yes. Um, so yeah, guys. So that's what all stuff that yeah. <laughs> this amazing young man, the amazing young individual spoke. Uh, young, I'll take young. Yeah, he's young. He's young. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Hey, you know, back to young Hercules real quick. You know, I love that Strife wasn't just a sidekick who shadowed around Ares. Like he was his own villain. Like I remember there was that episode where you sabotaged that uh, archery <laughs> contest for Artemis. Oh yeah, like like that was that was a great scene you did right there. <laughs> they gave me a lot of free reign, and mm -hmm. they it was like I said before, it was a great uh, uh, chance for me to work on my comedy skills. Um, when you work for the for American productions, because they were sort of the first American productions to come to New Zealand for a long period of time, it was a great school for all of us. You know, Shortland Street's a great school for actors just to start out and get used to working in television, get used to working in that genre. Um, but then working on American TV shows from, I was 22, 23 or something when I first started. It's just great school, man, because you've, you've got to learn how to do the accent. Uh, you know, you work with American directors and of course it's a fantasy show. So we're not always working opposite other actors. There's, you know, marks on the wall and green screens and lighting stands that we're acting to. There's a lot of special effects that we have to sort of participate in and stunt fights and young Hercules had a lot of you know fight scenes with ryan gosling and stuff and it's just great school man it's like uh you know it's like drama school where you're just getting paid mm. yes so two more questions for you joe before i go to the fans sure. so any advice you could what's your, so what's your uh, i'm out uh, my master right so what's your aspiring advice to any actors that want to be in the industry or actress i teach a bit down here and i always say to my students the thing that's kept me going is that i i've learned to trust myself as an actor so if i get a script or a scene or whatever and whatever my instincts are from reading off the page i trust that instinct and if if all involved the director with the producer the other actors if we're all on the same page go with that and really milk it for as much as you can if the director says look i have another idea maybe that's not working uh just trust that you can do it so tr i my my go-to word is trust. Trust yourself. Trust your look at you look at all your favorite actors, and why are they so good? And why do you love them? Because they trust what they do. Hugo Weaving's my favorite actor, Ooh. and and I've worked with him a couple of times, and I've seen him work, and he trusts every sing, single thing that he uh, comes up with. He trusts that moment, and he and he pushes it to go as far as he can with it. And if it doesn't work, he'll bring it back and try something else. But trust. Just trust yourself. Yeah. yeah, I loved him in Transformers and uh, Matrix and V for mm. Vendetta and yeah. uh, Red Skull. Is we did a film called Little Fish, and he's amazing in that movie, man. He's so good. I know. I love. I love you, giving. Especially, I just watched Captain America one like four yeah. hours ago before this interview, and oh my god, it's still yeah. Woman's yeah. still, it's still good. <laughs> he he really goes to you know he goes places with his acting and it's like it can be very dark and it can be very sad it can be very funny and it's just awesome yeah yeah right I remember I had to write an essay in college about uh, postmodernist literature and I used his portrayal as uh, Agent Smith uh, to explain oh, yeah. how he's the main character and not Neo played by Keanu Reeves <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and, and be, me being a Keanu Reeves fan a lot of people were shocked that i made that uh thesis <laughs> he's also the loveliest man you'll ever meet in your life 
Mm. So you know, he's a total, total gentleman. Within the boundaries of non-disclosure agreements, yep. uh, are there any upcoming project, current or upcoming projects that you'd like to let the fans know about? Um, well, we have a show down here called One Lane Bridge, which I think is on A and C over there. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, so we've just finished the second series of that, which will come on air over here in August, I think. Uh, at the moment, I'm not. There's not much happening. Um, I'm doing a lot of voice work. I do. I have a regular voice uh, client here, and it's a hardware store called Bunnings, and I do the voice for Bunnings. Mm. So that's I get to do that every week. Luckily, it pays the mortgage. <laughs> Um, and I'm going in Friday, I think I said, as to audition for a couple more characters on Power Rangers. So, Ooh. bit of teaching coming up as well. Uh, the next acting gig will come along at some point, but in the meantime, I'm, you know, I, I was just, I've been away for three months down in Queenstown, which is, you know, in the South Island of New Zealand, which um, Lord of the Rings fans will know exactly what I'm talking about. Yeah. So, it's a beautiful place to be, but it's nice to be home with my family, and I'm taking my son to his football, and I'm playing football myself again. Nice. Don't ask me why. I'm really old, <laughs> but it's a lot of fun. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I can't wait for the World Cup to come back on, so that yeah, you know, hopefully everything opens back up, and yeah. you know, I could get some mates over. We could get some guacamole and snacks and watch, you know, our favorite teams win, lose well, listen, somewhere in between. <laughs> the All Blacks are about to play, start playing again this year, and of course, the whole country stops when the All Blacks play. So yes. Um, so guys, now we have to the fan questions section and comments. Joel, are you ready? Yeah. <laughs> so we Hit do me. have a fan question from my cousin, Zima Seth Martinez. I don't know. He said he could not comment here. I don't know why. So it's actually a request. Yep. <laughs> so this request is, can you do one of your monster voices? And here's the scenario. You forgot to pay the power bill. Oh, oh, let's make it. You, you did not pay the power bill because you ran out of stamps. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I'll just, um, I don't know what, the, uh, see, I don't know the names and the voices because I've done so many. So uh, I'm going to do a mishmash of, okay? <laughs> yes. So scenario, you forgot to pay the power bill. Okay. <clears throat> wow, here I am. What's this bill that's coming to the mail? Huh? I forgot to pay the power bill. Oh my goodness. I need stamps. Yeah, you need stamps. Have you got any stamps? No, oh, I haven't got any stamps. But you got to pay the power bill. You idiot, you forgot to pay the power bill. It's a mishmash of some stuff. <laughs> that was amazing. I love it. Great. <laughs> then go down to the city and turn some victims into stamps. We cannot make any monsters grow if we do not have any power. You should write for the show. What are you doing? on? Yeah, yeah. what are you doing? It should be right <laughs> anyway. Uh, so there you go, Seth. My cousin in the Philippines. Hope you're happy. I hope so. so now, yeah. Yeah. Lothar was a fun main villain. It, you know, it's like you don't have to be a megalomaniac. Sometimes you just got to be that uh, out of touch uncle. Yeah. yeah. We all uh, have those. Let's see. Herder Mesikar says greetings from my mom, India. Hello. Hey. What's up, Aaron India? Goes, Aaron Ghost says hi. Did you watch episodes in which you voice characters once they were aired? Greetings from Argentina. Oh, hi, Argentina. Um, n no, I haven't seen many because uh, we don't really get told when they're on. And it's it's kind of it's because I guess it plays over here after school and I'm not really watching television after school. So I check in once in a while online. I did today, looked online at what I could have a look at and remind myself of, but there's not a lot around. And I think that might be copyright issues. Mm -hmm. So I probably need to uh, get a couple of DVDs just for prosperity. Well, um, Shout Factory has every season of Power Rangers up to RPM. So what, what's Shout Factory? Uh, Shout Factory is is the name of a distributor company that uh, makes okay. DVDs for a lot of TV shows. Oh, and see. and around 2011, they've made DVDs for all of the first 17 seasons of Power Rangers both in mm -hmm. box sets and for individual seasons. I actually right. have mo every season except for Turbo in the oh. other room. I, I wanted to bring Ninja Storm with me, but I forgot yeah. to. Wow. Uh, but yes, um, they should be available. They're also, um, they are they also uh, sell through Amazon if, right. yeah. you know, if nothing else. So I'm a real I'm a real collector of everything I've done. Yeah. But of course, 
I haven't done Power Rangers. So. Yes, and of course, uh, Hasbro, you know, if you want to get some more Monsters of the Day to make Lightning Collection figures, may I suggest oh. Footzilla or Digitron? Yeah, so <laughs> please, you have these monsters on. Come on, these are good monsters. Yeah. Classic ones. Yeah, I'll give you an example. You can make you can make a monster of a day that was just this guy in one episode. You can make a monster for yeah, let's go. Yeah. And Bucky Rapper, he was from a filler episode. Yeah, and he was in a filler episode too. <laughs> yeah. Well, I should get some I've got my Lord of the Rings stuff. I should get my Power Ranger stuff. Exactly. Yes. Uh let's see. Next comments. Oh, here we go. Next see. Uh oh, John Goddard. Hey Joel, you did a great voice of Power Ranger from here. Aw. Nice. Oh, thanks, man. Nice. To, well, we'd love to know where oh. you're from. Yeah, Johnny got it. Uh, Timmy Dacus says, "How is it with Grand Prix in episodes Sensei Sitaru when he's with you while you voice?" Um, they're asking me how how was it when you voiced the monster? Yeah, I guess because we go in and we do the, everything separately, so I wasn't in the room with Grant or Pua, uh, if that's what you're asking, because everything's done different days depending on uh, actor availability and stuff but um uh yeah so uh, i guess i guess they trust that we can do the session and it all gels together well and i think um you know our, our great directors in the studios we make they get us to do each line a few times mm -hmm. it's a typical way of uh, voicing animation stuff you'll do a lot of um you know, different versions of each take so that it all hopefully when it comes to putting it all together that it all gels well with everyone else's read and character stuff so yeah mm -hmm. uh param is asking is while doing the voice action have you ever oh no yeah well yeah i answered that well have you at any set no. i've never been on set no never ever um never so i've, I've met them obviously because poor was a great friend of mine and uh but i always i can't know them in other uh contexts rather than um on set mm. i work with poor a lot on shorten street <laughs> Uh, again, rest in peace, Pua. Yeah. And what's funny is there, there are reunions next week, week for Morphicon, Power and Ninstorm reunion, so of course. Okay. It's very yeah, cool. Nice. And, and it's the first uh, time at Power Morphicon where we have uh, Sally Martin and oh, nice. uh, and um, the, the rest yeah, uh, perform, uh, show up there. Because in the past, we only had... Uh, we only had Jorjito uh, Vargas Jr., who I think I might have accidentally met two days ago. And uh, and uh, uh, Adam uh, showed up in 2018. So, yeah. you know, it's nice to have some Wind Ninja representation at the yeah. conventions. <laughs> uh, now, Pua was uh, larger than life. He was such a funny guy. We used to laugh all the time. He was, you know, lovely, sweet guy, funny, you know. Good looking, talent, muscly. God, he was always doing press ups and <laughs> stuff in the hallways of Shortland Street. <laughs> yeah, I do remember his episode too. And I'm like, damn. I was like, before I was like, I was like, this guy looks familiar. I was like, oh my God, he was a Red Ranger. Yeah. 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 Was, like, he was a muscular. I was like, damn. That's uh, right. He was, um, yeah. yeah. Uh, oh, favorite sports team. Well, I had, you can't, you know, I've mentioned the All Blacks. The All Blacks down here, they're our national rugby team. And they are like, how would it be in the equivalent of the United States? They're like the uh, LA Lakers of New Zealand, mm. or the there you go, or the yeah. Chicago Bulls. You know, back when nice. they were amazing. Nice. Um, I love rugby. <laughs> yeah. So, and because I live in the Waikato, so the Chiefs are my team. I don't have anything, but this um, like the Chiefs, which uh, is our sort of provincial team but the all blacks are my favorite team this team here the richmond tigers they're the if you, anyone follows afl in australia mm -hmm. they're the black team with the yellow sash across there the richmond tigers they're my favorite afl team mm -hmm. and my favorite baseball team is the yankees <gasps> oh, sorry <man>. sorry <laughs> <laughs> but but i did i did go to i've been to the dodgers and i've seen the angels so i like the angels mm -hmm. Okay, that's, I'm not, I'm not. <laughs> I, I, as a joke, I like to say my favorite rugby team is the Broncos because uh, because there's this com uh, there's this comedy parody series actually where where there is a character who's from Space Australia, <sighs> so so you know so he's like all right Space Australia more specifically Space Brisbane uh, go Space Broncos <laughs> right right yeah yeah so the All Blacks is you know 
it's a thing I obsess about when they play, and I listen to all the talk back the next day on after the game, and I get all the analysis. And... Yeah. I mean, yes. I mean, go Dodgers, <laughs> <laughs> defending World Series champs. Anyway, um... yeah, they are. They are. I'll say one good thing about the, uh, the Yankees. My dad used to look like uh, Babe Ruth. <laughs> Really? Yeah, and his, nice. when, when he was younger, my dad used to uh, resemble Babe Ruth. So, <laughs> Kevin Smith and I, um, and I don't know if you remember Danielle Cormack. She's must have been in. She was in Zena. Um, we got a tour of the old Yankee Stadium back in like, 2000. So we sat in the dugout, and we had heated seats because they had heated seats in the dugout. This was pre-season, so we weren't allowed on the pitch or in the, in the clubhouse, but. Just to, just to be in the old Yankee Stadium before they knocked it down. Yeah. Incredible. I actually been to the new one in 2000. Yeah. I don't know when it was, but yeah, it was a new one. I actually did visit the old one because, like, you know, I yeah. think I it. And also, yeah. where my Dodgers? I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. But yeah, right. Because I used to be the Brooklyn Dodgers, of course. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. In the field of hockey, the only the only seasons I got to attend uh, uh, the Los Angeles Kings were the years where they didn't win the Stanley right. Cup. I went. Yeah, they've just, the, haven't they just won it? Haven't they just won no, it? Uh, the last one they won was 2014. Yeah. Oh, okay. Actually, yeah, game game two in LA. So. Oh. Yeah, that was one of the only two seasons that I did not. It's one of the only two seasons since 2011 that I haven't been able to attend. My <laughs> roommate. It's only the ones where we don't watch any of the games at the Staples Center where they end up winning. Yeah. yeah, my roommate who I lived with in the valley was a mad Kings fan, <laughs> LA Kings. Yeah. So I bet you was at the parade then. Yeah, I, I was. I was. I didn't go to the one thousand twelve, but I actually went to the one thousand fourteen. Yeah, well, I went to a game with him once, and for some reason, the second quarter he wasn't interested. And he said, "We don't watch the second quarter. We just go and drink, and then we come back for the third." So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> uh, let's see. Will you watch a Test Championship final? Definitely now. People who don't know, the Test Championship is the the sort of basically the final in the Test uh, Test cricket Test world. If you guys know cricket, right? Mm -hmm. It's our it's our baseball, mm -hmm. and we're playing India in the final to to find the number one Test team in the world, um, and that's going to be big because currently New Zealand are playing in England, and we're about to hopefully win that. Um, and I think you know I don't know when the game against India is, but we'll because you know cricket is. What rugby is to New Zealand and India, mm -hmm. um, so it's huge. It's it's going to be amazing. Um, Americans don't get uh, cricket; they don't understand it. I'm not surprised. It's very complicated. But when New Zealand is doing well, uh, it, it's we love it down here. And uh, so yeah, yeah. If nothing else, the one thing I can appreciate about cricket is that the fact that the bat kind of looks like those Aztec swords that have the uh, the obsidian teeth on them right yeah, yeah so, so i'm imagining that you know it's like playing baseball but the losing team has to be sacrificed to the sun god <laughs> and you know sometimes we want to sacrifice our players if they lose badly <laughs> uh one more how is it like going i bet is, i know who asked this question how's it going against nicholas King? Well, you know, as I said uh, in, the, in the scene that we did together, he was really wanting us to ramp up the fight and he wasn't afraid to, for us to... And of course, you know, an, an actor says to me, do you want to ramp it up? I'll, I'll ramp it up. And, um, you know, I was sure not to hurt him, but he was definitely... He's he's courageous and he's uh, he, he likes things to be genuine. And um, after the initial, oh my God, that's Nicolas Cage, he realised he was actually quite a decent guy and just wants to do a good job. So, yeah, um, yeah. And that was a, it was a great experience. Yeah, one of my favorite CG effects uh, in that movie was was when he becomes Ghost Rider inside the prison cell, and then he cracks his knuckles like right onto the screen and blows us all away. That one, and we, yeah, yeah, that's the one. and it's there. <laughs> yeah. No, anyway, oh, and that's pretty much it. All right, guys. So again, thank you guys for this, for, for joining a special interview, guys. Sorry, my mouth's dry. So that's wait, right. sec. Oh. I'm good. So again, thank you guys so much for being part of this special interview. And Joel, hope you had fun. Yeah, I did, man. Thank you so much. Yes. So before we leave, where can you find you on social media? If you have any or website or anything they can follow you at? Uh, Instagram at Joel Tobek is my main thing um, uh, on Twitter. But I don't really tweet a lot because I get, I get, I'm trying to stay away from all the politics. 
Mm-hmm. But the Instagram, yeah, at Joel Toby. Excellent. And my partner Mike, who actually memorized all your monsters. <laughs> yes. uh, you can find me on Instagram at chrono underscore just underscore cosplay. You can find me on Twitch at twitch.tv slash Belkin So that's right. I also don't have much in the way of social media. <laughs> You can find me on Instagram, DancingBoy247, and please follow us on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, and Twitter at The Morphin Network. Again, this is Joel Tebeck, veteran Power Rangers voice actor. I'll do his monsters one more time. Mike, let's see if you actually still remember. Who's the guy? Um, Footzilla. This guy? Uh, uh, Slobber Goblin. <laughs> this guy? Jupitron. <laughs> well, <laughs> uh, uh, Duplicator. <laughs> Yeah, good. Okay, 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 okay. Uh, UFO. 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 One. Um, uh, God, uh, God, uh, God, it's from Silver Lining Part One. I keep forgetting to say, uh, uh Gail Gax or something like that. Gorgax, Gorgax, Gorgax. Gorgax. people. Gorgax, and and of course, Digitron. <laughs> good job. Nice. He passed Joel, so he's not your. Well done. Man. Gorgax is the hardest one for me to remember. <laughs> not gonna lie. Well done. Oh, well done. So again, guys, this is the Morphin Network. Have a good night, good evening, yeah. good evening, or good morning, or, or good afternoon, wherever the world you are, and stay safe. We're almost, hopefully, die, this pandemic will die down. Or yeah. like that. So, mm-hmm. yeah, be safe, get vaccinated, whatever. So, yeah. All right, guys, this is Morphin Network, and we'll see you. Bye. See Thank you. Bye. Today's Morphin Network video is brought to you by Carson's Corner. Carson's Corner is a black LGBTQ owned small business. They sell merchandise and apparel on pop culture franchises. These franchises include King of the Hill, Dragon Ball, Sailor Moon, and of course, most importantly, Power Rangers. If you are interested in getting their amazing merch, be sure to check them out at www.carsonscorner.com.